Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about the three best inline six-cylinder engines of the year 2020. And so every year Ward's Auto puts out a list of the 10 best engines in their opinion. And on that list for 2020 there are three inline six-cylinder engines. So I thought it'd be cool to compare those three inline six-cylinder engines. Those engines being the three-liter inline six-cylinder belonging to the BMW M340i the 3 liter inline 6 cylinder in the Mercedes GLE 450 and the 3 liter inline 6 cylinder in the GMC Sierra 1500. So yes, they are all 3 liter inline 6 cylinder engines, but they all go about making power in quite different ways. So the BMW is entirely gasoline based, the Mercedes is a gasoline hybrid, and then the GMC Sierra actually uses a diesel engine. So all of them have the same displacement, the same style engine inline 6, uh, but very different styles here. And so I've drawn a simplified diagram of each engine here, just looking at the BMW engine. The left side of the board is going to be the front of our engines or the front of the car. Uh, so a longitudinally placed engine here. And then you can see the air comes in through the intake, travels through the compressor side of the turbocharger, passes through the air to water intercooler, goes in the engine, out through the twin scroll turbocharger. Now on this board, you'll notice these little green asterisks, these little green stars. And so the reason I have these little green stars, cars are complicated, right? You know, there's a lot to learn about cars and it can't all be explained in one video. So if you see one of these little green stars, I have a dedicated video entirely on that subject, which I will have a link to in the video description. If you're curious, hey, how does a twin scroll turbocharger work? Or how does an air to water intercooler work? I'll have those links in the video description. Moving on to the Mercedes, you can see the intake air comes in up front, travels to the back of the engine, wraps around into the compressor side of the turbocharger through an air to water intercooler, similar to the BMW, through the engine, and then out through a twin scroll turbocharger, just like the BMW. So the two major differences here, uh, first of all, we have included an integrated starter generator. So there's an electric motor slapped onto the end of the engine where you would have the flywheel or torque converter in that location there between that and the rest of the transmission. And then also the intake air routing. So you can see it's a bit more complicated. Now again, these are kind of simplified drawings. It doesn't look exactly like this, uh, but the BMW seems to have a more intelligent design as far as reducing lag and reducing, uh, you know, improving response of the engine. The way the Mercedes gets around that, you know, they do these for packaging reasons, uh, but they have that electric torque they can use, rely on this electric motor to kind of fill that gap uh, instead of relying entirely on a turbocharger to be able to spool up very quickly. And finally, we have the diesel engine. So that air comes through the intake, travels through the compressor of the turbocharger, through an air to water intercooler, through a variable intake manifold. So we can actually change the length of the runners there uh, using a valve, then travels through the exhaust through a variable geometry turbocharger. So great to use a variable geometry turbocharger. It has vanes that can change their angle inside that turbo. And by doing so, it increases the effective RPM range, which you can produce maximum torque. So a great thing to use. And so which of these engines makes the most power? Well, that goes to the BMW, 382 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque. The Mercedes, not too far behind, 362 horsepower, also 369 pound-feet of torque. So the BMW making 127 horsepower per liter, the Mercedes making 121 horsepower per liter. And then moving on to our diesel engine, only 277 horsepower, just 90 horsepower per liter but 460 pound-feet of torque and so this is where I want to get into a discussion you know lots of people uh, put too much emphasis on torque and partially to blame our marketing teams because they say our truck has this much torque and torque alone is a very meaningless number and so to demonstrate that I have this I uh, believe some people call it a tool so anyways this is a breaker bar it's two feet long and if I apply a force of 100 pounds right here which isn't too difficult for me to do you know I just put my body weight on it I might weigh a little bit more than 100 pounds if I put 100 pounds right here and this thing is two feet across two times 100 pounds 200 pound feet of torque so I me weak little Jason can create 200 pound feet of torque that's, you know, nearly half that of this diesel engine. So does that mean I am super impressive or this engine is super weak? No, it doesn't mean either of those things. What this means is not much unless you have this number attached to it here, this RPM. So the reason why 460 is an impressive number is because it occurs at 1500 RPM. 
So the thing that I want to make very clear is power is what matters. Power is what matters. And so let's compare these three engines. So we know how much horsepower they all make at 1800 RPM because we know how much torque they all make at 1800 RPM. And we can use the equation horsepower equals torque times RPM divided by 5252 to calculate horsepower, which I've already done. So at 1800 RPM, the BMW and the Mercedes are making the same amount of horsepower, 126. The GMC, because it has significantly more torque, is making 158 horsepower at 1800 RPM, 25% more than the BMW and the Mercedes. Now, that advantage starts to go away once we get into the higher RPM. So at 3750, that's when this thing, this diesel engine is making its peak horsepower, 277. Now we know the BMW and Mercedes torque at that uh, because it falls within their torque band between 1800 and 5000 here, 1600 and 4500 here. So both of them are hitting peak torque, which means they're both making 263 horsepower. So the GMC now only a 5% advantage. So if you were to have a drag race with three vehicles that all weighed the exact same amount, they had the same aerodynamics, everything about them is the same, except they have different engines for each of these. Uh, the BMW engine would be the slowest initially because it takes the longest to get to its peak torque. The GMC would be the quickest initially because it gets to that peak torque very quickly and the Mercedes would be somewhat in the middle but things would change very quickly so the GMC would get the launch but only very briefly once you get to about 4000 rpm then our BMW and our Mercedes start to take the lead and then as we keep climbing the BMW takes the lead and once we get this into its higher rpm region it's done it's going to stay ahead for the rest of the race forever because it has more power and power again is what matters okay how about bore stroke and compression ratio so of course the diesel is going to have the highest compression ratio 15 to 1 it's a compression ignition engine versus the spark ignited engines 10.5 in the Mercedes and 10.2 in the BMW and actually interestingly the diesel has the shortest stroke so 84 millimeter bore 90 millimeter stroke versus the 92 millimeter stroke in the Mercedes and 94.6 millimeter stroke in the BMW so I've also listed some interesting features about each of these engines that kind of makes them unique one of the interesting features of this BMW engine and this is the same engine basically that's used in the BMW Z4 it's a variant of the engine used in the Toyota Supra is the fact that it has an integrated exhaust and turbine housing so the exhaust manifold and the turbine housing of the turbocharger are actually all one piece so if you were to swap out the turbo you'd be swapping out the exhaust and that turbocharger. This engine also uses BMW's Valvetronic. So with a traditional engine, if you want to make more power, you simply open up your throttle valve. If you want to make less power, you reduce how open that throttle valve is. So changing the throttle valve's angle changes your engine's load. Now BMW does things differently. So they decide that the throttle valve will just simply remain open. In order to control the engine's load, you simply change how much you open the intake valve. So the more you open up that intake valve, and obviously I'm exaggerating things here a bit, but the more you open that intake valve, the more power you're going to make. And then if you reduce how much that intake valve is open, the less power you will make. So why does BMW do this? Well, a big part of it is efficiency. So if you look at the two examples here, one being BMW, the other being the traditional method, you'll see that with the traditional method, you're gonna have atmospheric air, so you'll have plenty of air pressure up until the throttle valve. And then if you're operating at a low load, say you're idling or you're traveling on the highway, you don't need a ton of power, then behind that throttle valve, you're gonna have very low pressure air. Versus BMW's method, you're gonna have atmospheric air all the way to those throttle valves. And so the difference here is that it's going to have significantly less pumping losses, especially in those low load scenarios. So it's a more efficient way of operating the engine. And the other benefit of it is that you have that response because you don't have to wait for that intake manifold to be filled up with atmospheric air. It's already there. Or in the case of boosted engines, you know, you're going to have to wait for that boost response to come in, but you've already got that atmospheric air right outside the valve. All you do is you open up that valve a little bit more and then you get more air within the cylinder. So they're controlling it at the intake valve rather than using the throttle valve, and in doing so it improves response and it improves efficiency. The Mercedes, on the other hand, gets its efficiency from pairing with an electric system, so by using a hybrid. So this integrated starter generator right here actually can produce an additional 21 horsepower and 250 newton meters or 184 pound-feet of torque for very short boosts, and of course that higher torque is going to be at lower speeds, but very cool that it can kind of help 
fill the gap of the turbocharger, also improve efficiency and add a little bit of power using that electric motor connected right there on the end of the engine. So it only has a 0.9 kilowatt hour battery pack used for this system. Uh, so not adding a ton of weight, but also meaning that you're not gonna be able to draw from the battery too much. So just getting these short little bursts of additional power and then of course the efficiency benefits. Another really cool thing about the Mercedes engine is on the AMG version of this engine, they tack on an electric supercharger. So instead of that intake air coming from the compressor side of the turbocharger and then passing through the air to water intercooler, first you have an electric supercharger. So you've got an electric motor spooling up a compressor that can spin very quickly up to 70,000 RPM and help create 6.6 .6 PSI of peak boost very quickly. So you've got the electric torque from the electric motor, you You've got the instant boost from this electric supercharger and during that you know kind of void in time when you're waiting for this turbocharger to spool up you can rely on those two sources to help create power so that you get a more immediate response so a neat little solution that mercedes has employed there by incorporating an electric supercharger and finally the gmc sierra's diesel engine and they should get a lot of credit for this engine the two-wheel drive version of this gmc sierra with the diesel engine is rated for 30 miles per gallon on the highway. So impressive coming from a truck. And this has a variable intake manifold, which is quite cool. So actually each cylinder has its own little valve and it will change the length of that intake runner, uh, depending on if you're at lower RPM or higher RPM, helping to increase the, the width of that torque curve. Another interesting thing about this engine, the fuel injection pressure is 2,500 bar. 36,000 PSI. So this really helps for that fuel to have a nice fine mist that also travels a good distance away from the injector nozzle. Now an interesting comparison, this BMW gasoline engine actually has one of the highest fuel injection pressures I've seen on a gasoline engine, and that's 350 bar or about 5,000 PSI. So the diesel engine here is still seven times higher fuel injection pressure uh, than that direct injection BMW engine. So again, if you have additional curiosities, you know, why does a diesel engine make more torque than a gasoline engine? How do air to water intercoolers work? How does BMW's Valvetronic actually work within that intake manifold? How do variable geometry turbos work? If you have these questions, look in the video description. I've got all kinds of links to relevant videos out there. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.